Hi, Colleen O'Hara here, host of The American Dream. Today, we're here in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. Ben Salem is a suburb right outside of Philadelphia, and I have a real treat planned for us today. We're here at a Pennsylvania staple, a true icon in the area. We're here at Philadelphia Philly Pretzel Factory. If you're not from the area, or maybe you're new to the area, you're not from around here, maybe you're planning to move to the area, there are a few things that you might want to put on your list. You might want to see the Independence Hall, where they sign the Declaration of Independence. Maybe you check out the Liberty Bell. You look at Betsy Ross House, where she sewed the American flag. You're going to want to put Philly Pretzel Factory on your list. We're gonna to get to go inside and meet with Dan DeZio. He's the CEO and co-founder of Philly Pretzel Factory. Why don't we go inside and check it out? We are here inside Philly Pretzel Factory headquarters, HQ. We're gonna go meet with Dan DeZio, CEO and co-founder of this incredible business located here in Ben Salem, Philadelphia area. We're gonna meet with Dan. We're gonna talk about the business, maybe get a little bit of the history of the business, how he got started, and we might even have a chance to make some pretzels today. Why don't you come with me? We'll go check it out. Hi, Dan. Hey, Colleen, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. You too. So thank you for taking time out of your day today and telling us about Philly Pretzel Factory. How did you get started in Pretzel Factory? Yeah, well, I really appreciate coming out. I mean, it was it's an honor to have you in. Um, and the way I got started is I grew up in Ben Salem. I right? think that's yeah. where our corporate office is, as a matter of fact, where we're at. And when I grew up in Ben Salem, my neighbor owned a pretzel bakery. Okay? Oh, okay. And uh, back in the day, the way pretzel bakeries worked in Philadelphia, there was about 10 pretzel bakeries. Okay. Um, and they were all back in a warehouse. Most people didn't know where they were. They would go uh, to Okay. work four in the morning they would twist the pretzels they would bake them and they usually closed by around nine o'clock okay they delivered to the same schools and hospitals and all these 10 pretzel bakeries were really lucrative businesses they were all fighting for business as got well it. going to the same school same hospital so my neighbor one day got stuck with a thousand pretzels um, this is 40 years ago oh my god 40 years ago <laughs> and i'm out back and he said what are you doing today and i said nothing and no plans and he said well i got stuck with a thousand pretzels um why don't we why don't I set you up on the corner? And whatever you sell, will split because okay. I'm gonna throw them in the trash. Okay. So I said, great. And he said, well, I first, uh, I said, let's do it. And he said, first I have to ask your mom, it's okay. And for <laughs> some reason, my mom said it would be okay to stand on Roosevelt Boulevard and Ron Street, which is one of the most dangerous roads in the country. And a uh, 12 lane highway out there at 11 years old, which I can't even fathom, to be honest with you. Right. Um, but she let me do it. I sold a thousand pretzels, sold them all. Oh, and you're uh, brought in, back then it was five for a dollar. Okay. So brought in uh, 200 hours, I got a hundred. He got a hundred. Just to put this for perspective, my allowance was three dollars a week. So I just got nine months worth of allowance in one day. You so I was king. Yeah, I was so excited. <laughs> so I said, let's do it again tomorrow. And right. he, he was like, okay, I'll bake up some extras and I'll set you up again. And then within a couple weeks, every kid in my middle school uh, oh, saw me kidding. walking around with wads of $1 bills with oh. a 20 wrapped on the outside and they all wanted jobs. And next thing I know, no I started kidding. organizing kids. You know, I'll set, I need 10 guys, 15 guys. And eventually it became 45, 50 kids a day wow. on all the various corners on Roosevelt Boulevard. And you were hooked. You, we were, I you was were hooked. In. Yeah. In fact, oh my things God. got so good after middle school. I was doing through middle school and eighth grade, I was doing after school and on weekends and all summer long. And uh, by the time I got to ninth grade, it was such a lucrative business that I, I made the business decision that I was going to sell pretzels full time, unbeknownst to my, my mom. Um, so I <laughs> stopped going. I didn't go to school in ninth grade. So and almost made it through the entire year uh, until one fateful uh, evening. I got a knock on the door in May and there was two sheriffs there and they were there to arrest my mom. And <laughs> they thought my mom was forcing me to sell pretzels to support the family. And the reason they thought that my dad had just recently died. Oh, OK. And so they didn't know the dynamic, what was going on. She was still right. giving me like $3 a week allowance, right. as much as money as I was making. Um, so, and she didn't, she knew I was working on weekends, but she was a single mom. So right. she didn't realize I'm skipping school. I was faking my report right. cards. I had it mastered. Oh and uh, so that's how it began. Turns out right when that happened, my mom met my stepdad, who was a real strict FBI agent. Okay. And he said, pretty simple. You get good grades, you sell pretzels. You don't get good grades, you can't sell pretzels. And that was the end of it. So I repeated ninth grade. Uh, the motivation and, was yeah, there. Yeah, it was there. And uh, <laughs> just went back to Apple and a weekend. And okay. And, and that's
that's sort of how it all began. Dude, you were a young entrepreneur. I guess. I didn't realize that at the time. But right. I was just, I, you know what? I just wasn't a great student, frankly. Right. And I just loved, the pretzels always made people excited. Right. right. So when people and would still see do. Yeah. Um, so they would be so excited. And kids in the backseat, they were driving to the shore, they were traveling. They were so excited about it. So I just got hooked by not only the money, the money wasn't really it. It was, you know, the excitement that, you know, people were so excited to see you. Right. Um, so that part was really worked for me. And, and at the time, my stepdad, or my um, real dad passed away and my boss, Steve, his name was Steve Newell, the guy okay. who set me up in the bakery. And uh, he was almost like a father figure to me. He was only okay. about 10 years older than me, but just big difference in right. age at that point. Yeah. Um, so he, it was exciting to, to grow this and we were kind of growing a business together right. uh, the way I took it anyway. Right. So, and that's how it that's began. amazing. Yeah. And then now you're Philly Pretzel Factory. We're here in the headquarters. You started franchise opportunities. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So what happened originally, so I ended up going to college, still okay. selling pretzels here and there. I uh, graduate and become a stockbroker. And okay. I realized real early, I'm really not cut out for the nine to five corporate job. Got it. Um, probably I was just spoiled from selling pretzels every day, getting paid at the end of the day, mm. um, talking to people. And here I am trying to do these investments. Just wasn't my heart, wasn't it? Okay. So the nice part about that job though was, this is 1995, 96. I'm trying to find a pretzel machine. And as I told you, there's 10 pretzel bakeries that were out there right. before us. The reason there was only 10 wasn't was people didn't want to get the pretzel business. They couldn't get a pretzel machine. These were oh, homemade okay. machines for the most part. Okay. So I had to find one. And the nice part about being a stockbroker was I had free long distance. Back then, long distance was a thing. <laughs> and uh, so I ended up. I remember. Yeah, I ended up calling all day. I would spend seven to eight hours a day there calling, trying to find a pretzel machine. And okay. I finally tracked one down in Florida. Okay. And so so I called my college roommate and I said, he was he was a psych counselor, wasn't happy with his job. Okay. I said, listen, I'm gonna buy this pretzel machine, I'm gonna go into the pretzel business. And he was like, he didn't ask about money, he didn't ask about anything, but he's always been about quality of life. And okay. He was a golfer at the time. And he said, tell me about the business. And I said, go to work at four, you twist some pretzels, you bake them and you're done by not. And he goes, I'm in. Because he so thought he could golf all day, right? <laughs> that was his, his job, that was get his, it out yeah, of the way. That was his plan. And uh, <laughs> so we go, we fly to Florida, we uh, go there and the plane lands, we land in Tampa, we drive down an hour and get to this gentleman's house where I agreed to make, now, I haven't seen the machine. There's no, okay. big, no pictures, no nothing. Right. Um, prior to internet. Or I was, yeah, so, before internet and cell phones. Yeah, so I don't see the machine. So I get there, I think he's gonna take me to a warehouse. He's in like a, an adult community. Okay. And he goes, it's in the garage. And I was, thought it was a little weird, it was in the garage. So we, he opens the garage up. Now I've seen these pretzel machines before. Len, my partner's never seen one before. Okay. And we're taking our life savings and buying this, okay. this business. Right. Opens the garage up and in the back, there's like a tarp and there's a lawnmower and a thing on top of it. <laughs> and he starts taking his stuff off. Right. He takes it off and he unveils it. You know, I'm excited. Can't, I spent a year trying to find one of these. Right. And here it is, right. the big moment. Ta -da. Ta -da. And it's not a ta-da <laughs> moment to say the least. It was the <laughs> worst machine I've ever seen. Right? Oh no. It's cast iron, it's plywood, um, it's homemade. Oh um, my gosh. And it looks homemade and it's been sitting for a long time, so it makes it look worse. Oh my so, gosh. So ended up, we're there and we look at it for a while, we're inspecting it, and my partner says, All right, where can we plug it in? The guy goes, you can't plug it in, it's three phase. We don't have three phase in a residential home. Um, so uh -oh. we can't even see if it works. Okay. Right. So we agreed to buy this thing for twenty thousand dollars. So oh my God. we're looking at it, looking at it. Eventually, my partner comes and says, "Hey, um, you know, I can't, I can't do this. Right. I just can't. This thing's not worth fifty dollars. Right. And you know what? I can't argue with him. Right. right. It looks so bad because I've seen these before, and this one looks really bad. Oh, so man. after about an hour, um, we we go. Listen, I'm sorry, but we're not going to buy it. Right, so he goes, okay, and close garage, and we get in the U-Haul truck. Now we gotta drive back in an empty right. U-Haul truck. Our dreams are dashed. Uh-huh, right? disappointed. And, yeah, and we, we have to work the next day. Right. right. We have to be at work, so right. uh, we had planned this one day. So get in the truck, and I go to driveway, and there's a stop sign maybe 50, 50 feet from the guy's house, and I pull up at the stop sign, and I give this, wouldn't call it inspirational speech, but I gave a little, little speech, <laughs> and I gave them, I go, Len, we're 26 years old, or whatever we were, 25 years old. I said, this is the fork in the road in our lives. We're gonna go back to our regular jobs that we're not happy with, right. or we could take a chance on the machine. And then said, but I can't imagine paying all that money for that, for that machine. Right. And I said, you know, maybe we can negotiate with him. Now he originally said no negotiations. He was firm because okay. he knew he had something special. Right. So then said, you think you know, let, let me see. So we back okay. the truck up. Okay. We go back, knock at the door, bring the guy back out. He comes back out. We're negotiating with him there. He orders pizza for lunch. We keep negotiating. His wife makes dinner. We eat dinner there. <laughs> 
it's 11 o'clock at night now. We're still negotiating oh with the guy. Oh my gosh. I think we just physically wore the guy down that he was just like, I'm done. <laughs> you tired him out. And he said, how about, he goes, I'll, I'll, I'll sell the machine to you guys at a really reduced price. And I was like, all right, so now how we get it out, we have to get a we tow truck to drag it out of the garage, put it on the flatbed tow truck, back it up to the U-Haul truck, put it oh in. Oh my gosh. Now we're here we are driving up to Philadelphia with this machine, 20 hours, 24 hours, whatever it was. Oh my driving gosh. up to um, Philadelphia. We don't know where we're putting it. Oh, and, uh, okay. So when we get it there, put it in my mom's garage for a, a couple of days. But eventually we were looking for a location. We were looking to do what all the other pretzel bakeries did. The 10 pretzel bakeries, right. warehouses, nobody knows about. And we're looking, but they wanted $1,500 rent for those. Okay. Eventually, somebody mentioned a spot that was on Frankfurt Avenue across from the Mayfair Diner. Okay. They said, there's a spot there I call, and the guy said he wanted $1,000 a month in rent. So I said, what do we care where we're at? We're closing at nine in the morning. Right. I'd rather pay 1000 than 1500 Right. So we took that location, ended up going in there, and uh, when we originally opened the store up, we were gonna, we were opened up at six in the morning for the, you know, start, we twisted at four, but we ended okay. up opening doors at six, and we were gonna set kids up in the corner. We didn't know what we were doing. We were gonna start delivering and right. samples out. And at nine o'clock, when we were technically going to close, there was a line of 45 people in line. No kidding. And the line never went away till five o'clock in the afternoon. I told Len to sell his golf clubs. You knew clubs. had something. We're gonna stay open. <laughs> um, and it sounds no like, golf. it sounds like such a dream and it, it, it was. But it's we, amazing. It is, but the problem is, we didn't know you could get ingredients delivered, right? We were really green in this, this business. Okay. Wasn't well thought out to say the least. Right. And uh, we would go well, to you're Sam's young Club. you're you're learning. Yeah, we'd go to Sam's Club every night. Right. We would get our ingredients, the flour, and, and you know, at the front of Sam's Club, there's all those empty boxes. Right. We used to take those boxes and we would bring them and we they were our packaging material. So okay. old potato chip box, that's what, if you were 50 pretzels, we put them in those pretzels. Oh, um, okay. okay. So we did that every day. Then right. We, we had this deal, we'd go home at eight o'clock, we'd eat dinner and we would shower and we'd be back at nine and we would sleep from wow. nine to 12 on the flour bags every night, seven days a week. Um, no and at 12, kidding. we started twisting and we got the airport account right away. We got some big accounts. And again, it sounded like a dream come true, but after a few months of seven days a week, 21 hour days, um, it, it really took its yeah. toll. So um, that's but some dedication. It was, it, it really was. Well, um, good for you. We look back with some fond memories of it, but right. I can tell you living it was not enjoyable. 26 years it's, old, all your friends are going to the right. shore, they're doing fun stuff, and right. here we are working. Um, right. But we knew we were excited about where we were, and it was exciting, right. the business, and people were so excited because even Philadelphia, who grew up here, they never got hot pretzels. See, they were used to buying yeah. them off the street corner right. on a car. You're right. And here they were coming, we couldn't keep up. So literally the pretzels would be out of the oven and we would put them in the bag. And and what right. happened was everybody touched the pretzels right. and they go, they bought five or 10 and they go, oh, give me 20, give me 30. Yeah. They kept buying more because they were so they excited were warm. about warm. Oh and, my um, God. So that's how it began. That's amazing. Yeah. What it, a great story. I could see it, but it's a classroom upstairs. So when we do training, half the day is in the training center and another half day is up in the classroom. It should probably be 75% up there. 25% down here. I okay. mean, the technology part of the POS systems and mm. the marketing and the Facebook, it's just overwhelming now. Compared to yeah. 10 years ago, we could have spent 95% of the time in right. here and 5% there. And most importantly, we'll show you how to make pretzels you're going to get good at that no matter what, especially when we're at the store. Right. But the stuff upstairs where you really could sit down and spend time yeah. learning about how to brand the business and, and grow the business is the most important So part. that's kind of your future, like the business has changed and you're evolving over time and that's really, you know, everybody has to spend more time doing the social media stuff and all the, yeah. the computer stuff where before, like you were saying, when we first started, there weren't even cell phones. Right, and we, uh, even the products that we sell the most of, so party trays are our number one seller. It could be 25 to 30% of a store sales. That didn't exist when we first opened. So really? that evolved, yeah. And, okay. and now you could go to a party and there not be a birthday cake there, but there will be a pretzel tray there, that's for sure. It's, <laughs> it's, it's almost impossible not yeah. to have it. And you know what I, we really realized after time, and we've gotten complaints, ironically, about this. People at full catering companies cater an event. Um, filet mignon, the full lasagna, the whole nine yards, and somebody will bring a tray of pretzels, right. right? Just a guest, and there won't be really enough for everybody because they just bought one tray as an right. added item. And the problem is, the person spent a fortune on his caterer, filet mignon, and all these great shrimp. Um, but the problem is, it's not really great finger food, right? right. And when you're at a party, you're just committing to like right. sitting down. You really just want to grab one, eat it, right. grab another one. You might yeah. eat a pretzel or two by the time you add them all up. But it's just one of those things, and it become a really big hit. And here you are spending all this money for this right. catering company, and you feel like, oh my God, I didn't have. It looks like you didn't even have enough food, but they right. weren't even planning on it. And once that happens, that's the beauty of it. People come back, um, and they're 
loyal forever. So whoever threw right. that party, they might get rid of all the fancy <laughs> uh, dishes and they'll have pretzel right. trays for sure. Let me take you into the test kitchen right, and show you. you around, make some pretzels. Hi, how are you? Hello. So Colleen, this is Christina and Jonathan. Hi, nice to meet you both. They are head of our R&D team here at Philly Pretzel Factory. And okay. uh, as I told you earlier, there's a lot of new products we're working on, keeping them top secret right now. But these are the two that uh, are working on those products. Okay. And, uh, getting them over the finish line. So we're That's real excited. really exciting. So this kitchen here is designed for two things. One is we do training here once a month. Okay. We come in for a week. Uh, we have a classroom upstairs. So we spend a week, uh, half the day downstairs making pretzels from scratch. And then half the day, you know, learning the back end of the business. Okay. Um, and then the weeks that we don't have training, we use this as our R&D lab. And that's where Jonathan and Christina come in and really, you know, create the magic and start I was creating gonna products. Say some magic yes. happens yeah. in this room. <laughs> so what we're gonna do today, we're gonna show you exactly. We're gonna get you to twist some pretzels. We're gonna show you how to make some pretzels right from scratch. So you guys want to jump in? Show us how it's done. So excited! Tell us what to do. We're here with Christine and John. We're in the test kitchen of Philly Soft Pretzel Factory. We're gonna make some pretzels. She's gonna. You want to show us how it's done? Sure. I'm excited. So first we're going to add some water to the bowl. Um, it's already measured out, so we're just going to press the button. That keeps okay. everything consistent, so we can get consistent batches and also monitor the temperature of the water. We're going to add a bag of flour. Colleen, you want to hop in a little closer okay. and get you in there? Perfect. Right. And this is flour that is produced um, to our specifications to make a nice chewy pretzel. Okay. We had a fantastic day here at Philly Pretzel Factory. We got to meet with Dan DeZio, CEO and founder. He told us about the history. Special thanks to him. Special thanks to Kristen and John in the test kitchen. We got to bake pretzels. We got to salt them, twist the pretzels. It was amazing. We had really had a lot of fun. Next time you're in the area, make sure you put Philly Pretzel Factory on your list. I'm Colleen O'Hara, your host with the American Dream.